Uh, hello, I'm going to be fitting a deer antler to one of my hiking sticks. Um, I haven't uh, fully straightened this stick. I haven't uh, shaped it. I've done nothing to it. Um, all I've done is basically sized up the end piece here so that I've got room and material to work to the dimensions of the antler here. I will show you that in a minute, what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not going to go through the process of making the hiking stick um, because basically I've already covered that and that was a pretty uh, exhaustive process <laughs> doing that video um, well past the time frame what most people put towards showing you how to make a hiking stick. So I've well covered that in every aspect but I will show you how to get the deer antler onto the end of the hiking stick and that when you've seen what I've done you should have a rough idea how to manufacture a um, deer antler um, head to your hiking stick. As you can see I have started drilling out the center pith or core. Um, the reason for that is basically you can put a threaded bar and shall we say glue it in position and then drill out the stick head here and put a, a threaded bar and drill down into there and marry them up but I prefer if I can to shape the end by taking the internal um, structure and making a plug which will sit proud like that from a flat should we say cut off point that plug will then in essence sit in there and it will marry up flat around the edge of the antler here um, I will show you that because that might not mean anything at the moment but um, so where I am at the moment I've got the deer antler gripped in a vise it's got some protection to stop the vise marking it I've got a drill bit here which I've marked off at roughly an inch that is so basically when I'm drilling down through here I've kind of gauged it I need to be about an inch down much more than that I'm going to start eating into the uh, the good part of the antler shall I say so um, yeah for this one those measurements aren't a given they may change antler to antler but um, yeah roughly an inch on this one's it's got I'm going to make a plug to go into this one so um, I've got to continue finishing uh, drilling out this uh, center pith and that is basically look it looks like a, an aero chocolate bar it's got a very aerated uh, honeycomb look and feel about it but you need to get uh, a majority of that out because it's not the strongest uh, material for a plug to sit against even when it's glued you really need to get out to the um, the best part of the antler at least in a majority of the uh, uh, should we say plug surface which is going to marry to the stick to give it full strength so i'll just quickly show you how i'm drilling that out Right, with the drill I'm going to set it on a speed and I'm going to put it on a constant speed and I'm actually going to work the drill bit around and basically shape the, the shape that I and the depth of what I'm desiring. So I'll be doing a circular motion watching the core disappear out to the outer layer of the antler and also gently taking it down to its depth. Um, everything is gentle everything is um, stop check again stop check again because you can't replace what you've taken out so i'm about to do the final bits now so i've used a two-part epoxy and i've packed out the ends of the antler i've drilled the pith out as of the bottom so i've drilled it out packed out with epoxy with a fair dome and i've used a rough file, some sandpaper of various grades uh, to bring back a cap shape and I am now polishing it out with a fine backed sponge uh, abrasive. Now that's bringing it up like with an ice cold 
uh, bone brilliant shine uh, to it and um, that will look quite nice when I finished it uh, and it's really hard it actually feels like bone as well so um, that's going to look really nice and quite stunning. Um, yeah, I've yet again to do this one here. All I've done is taken it down and I've still to make the necessary uh, sanding and grading on, of that um, end cap. But um, that's my next job. I will show you then how I make the plug in the stick uh, to be able to insert it into this and how I glue it. But yes, I've, you can see I've still got some work to do on this, polishing this one out, then I'll move on to this one. Um, yeah, looking very uh, pleased with that. That's gonna look, it's gonna really show up quite nice. And um, I was gonna do an oak cap on it with a piece of wood, but the oak I have is pretty much the color of the antler itself. So it would have looked, You would. it wouldn't have stood out as like a cap. So, um, yes, this ice white will look quite nice because it uh, does look and feel like bone in itself. What I'm quickly going to show is how I get this here, should we say, nice fine edge. Um, basically, you can see from the dome, I've sanded this down and I've got it to roughly where I want it to be. Um, always being careful that you don't want to score the bone. I have a few pieces there which I will scrape off, but I don't want to scrape into the lip because I want to keep that flush edge. So everything, as with um, um, when you're doing technical detailed work, take it slow and check each after each stroke if necessary, just to make sure that you're in the right direction because let's face it you can't put nothing back on and it's a waste of your time if you've got to drill and clean it all out and go for it again yeah so I'm just taking very small bits off at the moment and this one here I've got to be quite delicate because there's a little bit of the wall wouldn't take too many passes over if I was to misjudge any of my filing and you'd be down into the epoxy and that would not look right I would have to cut it down another a few centimeters and start again on this um, particular tang of the antler but as I said I'm being slow and it might not look like anything's coming off but I'm just taking very small powdery bits off and um, I'll then move on to the initial sanding process. With some very fine grey sandpaper I am now just trying to get that beveled edge smoothed out before I go on to the polishing phase. So yet again I'm trying to allow for the curves and I'm just polishing this epoxy. I would always leave epoxy for longer than they recommend on the actual um, product tin, tube or however you're going to get it or if even if you're going to use this you don't have to use this method you could just glue a piece of wood on a um, piece of horn anything like that and indeed shape it uh, however you deem fit but if you're going to use epoxy like me I would leave it for it always says between 4 and 12 hours but I would leave it at least 24 if not 2 days it's not hurting just put it to one side and come back the reason being you've got such a volume of it stuffed into the antler um, it just needs that extra time to go off and there's nothing worse than hitting a should we say piece that hasn't uh, gone off properly and it ruins it all you then have to come back and uh, possibly drill out and do it all over again Wait for it to go fully hard. If you're in no rush, just leave it possibly two days and then do the sanding. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm just beginning to actually take the edges off that. And um, I shall uh, come back to you and show you the polishing in a moment. Now I have the rough shape and the dimensions which will fit this particular bit here. I'm going to polish with this fine backed uh, foam polisher. Yeah, when you're polishing, 
if you can find a piece on your pad that you've wore down more than um, the other parts of the pad, all the better. Um, I have a part here that I can identify which has lost um, a good 75% of its abrasive quality um, compared to the other parts of the pad. Because that, as we may deem it um, to the inexperienced eye, as a part of the pad which says it's of no use um, in the, should we say, sanding uh, qualities, there's just enough on that to polish epoxy to a baby's bum of a mirror polish. This actually feels just like uh, bone. Uh, it is so smooth and it looks so white. Like I said, so even though it has virtually no abrasive qualities left in that particular area, that area for me is golden now in being able to put that final uh, polish on that epoxy to give it that the wow factor. Right, the antler itself around here will get a polish up. So any, should we say, um, residue epoxy or or anything that looks a little bit untidy there will polish up and polish out um i should do that uh, um and i'm pretty happy with that you can see that that they're capped off really nicely um and it looks very well stunning actually uh, the white has brought it out really nice um so now i'm happy with that i'm now going to move on to the next parts Right then, I've now cleaned that one fully up now. I've cleaned up that hole. I've got it to the depth which I feel suitable, which is, I've just used this as a reference, this uh, drill key. You can see the silver bit, and that is the exact depth of the hole. Now, I need to transfer that measurement on the key, the silver bit, onto the head of my stick. From here, I need to make a circle all the way around here. You can use a pencil, but there's always a danger that you're going to get a wobbly line. So I'm just going to get some masking tape. I'll just put a very quick mark there with the pencil. Then I'll run a bit of masking tape round, and I'll show you that in a minute. Yeah, so basically I've put the first mark here. I've brought it down on the line to the key with the key is on the top of the wood there, my actual start of the measurement. From here, all I'm doing is just marking where that measurement should be. In various places, probably breaking it down into four parts. Just putting a little um, pencil line. Now, if I was to draw that with a pencil, there's always a danger that you'll wander off. All I'm doing by doing this is giving me a rough, rough guide. So I'm happy with that. I now have one, two, three, four marks there. With those four marks, I can then get my tape and put the outside edge to one of those marks. And I'm going to bring that tape around, but I'm going to make sure that tape follows a nice clean line. Now, what I'm doing here is just making sure the edge of that tape hits that line. And I keep going around until I get a nice clean line. Right, from there you can see I have what I would deem a very clean line and something I can work with. From here I'm now going to score that, should we say, block of wood here following this line and I'll show you that. Um, I'm going to use a coping saw and I'm going to cut down to roughly the 
depth of the blade. It's not a very big depth, but it gives me something to use as a backstop when I start to whittle away a peg. So um, it's not too big a, uh, should we say, a cut into the wood, but it just gives me that reassurance that I'm not going to slice into the shaft. So basically all I'm going to do is just follow this line completely around. And it can be a little bit nerve wracking. You don't, because obviously with everything with this, at this particular point here, you don't want to lose wood that you can't replace. There, I'm just coming around. Just following the line, that's all I'm doing. And you can get the idea of what I'm doing here. Uh, the neat, neater job that you can do here, the less, should we say, work you're making for yourself when you try to marry up the um, antler to your flat surface here. The two-part epoxy resin can be, should we say, uh, forgiving in taking up small gaps but it won't allow for, shall we say, major errors. So I'm gonna work my way around and then we'll see where we are then. Right, um, what I've achieved now is that cut to the depth of that blade all the way around. Um, I'm gonna keep the masking tape on because that will help me, shall we say, when I put the two-part epoxy on any spillages, it will keep off the shaft. Yet again, reducing work for myself, uh, constantly backtracking, sanding stuff I've already done. So basically, I've got my cut. Now I need to, on the front, get a rough center line. So I've got, I want to try and mark a center on here. Um, basically, I will do a couple lines along the top as a cross and that should give me my center mark which will I'll mark on it you can see I've found a center growth ring and basically I've done a diagonal there so that gives me a rough idea of where the center of this is but as we know wood doesn't grow should we say symmetrical so I'm now going to place my trusty washer with the center bit where it's cut out and I'm going to place this on this and I'm now going to try and find a visual center that's all I'm trying to do is find a visual center and that would give me an idea when I'm now trying to work whittle away I will have a center mass of the actual dowel so I won't be going heavier into one end than the other so I'm going to do that now Basically, I'm looking for the center, and I can already see just by doing this, just by finding the center of that, uh, what I believe is the center, I can easily now see that, uh, that this piece of wood hasn't grown symmetrical. There, with that there, I put that on, I've just basically coloured that in. I now have a centre of mass that I can work to. Um, it's just a visual aid, it's not a, what I'm going to be whittling it down to size. It's just that when I'm bringing, cut, taking away mass down to that line, I can see roughly as I work my way around how close I am and how much meat I'm leaving in relation to that centre mark, that's all. Yeah, so now with a small knife, I'm going to very quickly whittle down. Um, you are better off to use a fixed blade. Safety, because you're going to be going down, for, you don't want no slips to cut yourself. So think safety, wear gloves if you need to, or you, or you should really be on the hand that's holding the wood. And um, remember... You have a sharp instrument that you are going to be working uh, around um, this stick in close proximity to yourself. So think safety and obey all, shall we say, uh, knife 
well, safety rules, as in um, not placing yourself in harm's way or any part of your body in harm's way while you're trying to remove any wood. So basically, um, I'm now, and I'll quickly show you, going to take slivers of wood, only thin slivers, down to that line. I will do that till I've gone right the way around and then the idea is to get my deer horn or uh, antler shall I say and keep uh, putting it on till I start to get it to bite and it'll sit on on its own on the tip once you've got the tip sitting on you then have a reference point with depth you can start working down again but this is all about doing it slowly. It's all about finding. Um, it's all about finding that point where this fits snug and tight. If it's too loose, um, you're not going to get a good solid joint. I know people will say epoxy, uh, two-part epoxy will take up any slack, and it does. Um, it's not just an adhesive, it will take up the slack or any voids uh, provi providing a good solid fit. But ultimately, you really do want that wood to wood contact in the most of the places within that uh, joint. So um, I'm now going to work my way around and uh, see where I am in a moment. Yeah, so very quickly you can see I'm just taking off small slivers here at the moment um, and I'm just, just working my way around slowly. Um, as you can see, I've got a glove on, but uh, once I've got it bit, I am well out the way of the um, knife. Um, a fixed knife is better if you can get one. I have my fixed knives there ready, but um, to be honest with you, this is a nice thin blade. And I can work my way down through like this here. And you can see that I'm taking off a sliver and then I've gone right down to there. And then you can pull back up as well in this manner as well. So basically take the first few slivers off like this. But like I said, safety and trying to keep everything out of the way. So as you can see, I'm working my way round. And just pulling these bits of wood off. And you'll have to do the same. Uh, take your time. There's no rush here. I've got a chair. I've sat down. I've made myself comfortable. I would actually have a cup of tea on the go if I'd... Uh, uh, thought about it a bit more but I'm just going to continue doing this and hopefully you've got the measure of what I'm trying to achieve here at the moment I'll bring you to the next step when I try to start fitting the um, antler just to make the uh, measurements to get it to go on right you can see I'm now beginning to get the antler to marry up on that plug my plug is slightly more complicated than it should be because it's slightly oval. That is to fit the horn, um, or should we say antler. Um, if it had been, should we say, um, if I was able to get a more rounded um, plug made, that is what you need to do. Um, there's nothing wrong in this. It just means that I've got to be more delicate, more careful, and it's going to require me to, should we say, spend more time doing this than I need to. But I am uh, going to take my time now, and I'm just going to shave little bits off this plug now till I get that to fit on nice and tight. It'll mean me taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, for as long as I need to, till I get that, uh, shall we say, uh, dowel plug to be a precise fit. Right, in the dowel, I'm just going to cut a very small resin channel. That will allow any excess resin to exit the joint without trying to push the actual uh, deer antler off the actual dowel. Um, 
that happens because there's like a buildup of air and product it won't compress anywhere so as far as you push it if it has nowhere to go it'll just be like a kind of um, car shock absorber like you know it'll just keep bouncing up and down on it you won't get it to seat properly so you need a method of uh, allowing excess air or product to shall we say seep out of the actual joint when it's under pressure um, it doesn't have to be big it's just a very small score along the dowel uh, so when you push the uh, antler onto the dowel if you do it slowly and methodically that will give the resin in air a chance to actually escape um, if you just try to ram it straight on you're still going to get that dieseling pistol uh, piston effect um, so you do have to be kind of um, a little bit aware that it will need a little bit of coaxing onto the dowel um, so yeah um, as you can see I've got the dowel there all I'm doing is taking a very sharp knife and I'm just just putting a very very small small channel um, yet again knives and that be careful this is just me putting a very small channel in it doesn't have to be big and you're not looking to compromise the strength of the wooden dowel either so basically I'm just trying to, um, it can be fiddly, and I'm just bringing it down, and I dig it, that channel out a little bit, I'm trying not to go too deep into the wood. There. I'm just just taking a bit of the edge off it here hopefully you can see that um, I'll try and pick it up and that um, right there you see that faint line there? That's scored enough just to allow the actual um, resin in air to escape out the top. Because it will be forcing down here and it will come out the bottom. So that's all I've got to do now. Right then. The job isn't actually finished there at the moment. Because you will have to put your antler on push it down and you're going to have to work your way around the dowel to try and get it to seat properly properly any high areas you'll just need to gradually scrape off the base where it's going to sit and allow this to marry up properly on there so it doesn't have like gaps like what I'm trying to illustrate here like that so what you're doing is you're pushing it down and if you've got a gap like this, if you can see, you would take off this end here, just gradually just taking small slivers off so it would gradually seat back down around so it sits flush. That is something that you will have to do on your own and it takes a little bit of time in practice. Small bits of wood off, even if it's just scrapings to get it to fit flush. Um, like I said, it may be that way, it could be that way, that way, or that way, but you'll have to just gently take off these little bits. Um, you'll, you'll notice the bits that you'll have to take off because wherever there's a slight gap, you know it's the opposite end it's touching, you've got to take a little bit off to bring it back down. Um, that's just something that, um, it's just an annoyance that you know and it's a and it is time consuming to do that to get it as right as you can one thing i will say that um always always remember everything with doing sticks and doing this project here sometimes just sometimes stand back take a look at it you may never be able to achieve perfection and in the 
pursuit of perfection in some projects you could actually end up ruining a project um, so once you feel you've got it as good as you can get it but you know you you must always learn to stop there not keep pursuing by taking wood off because you can ruin a project but that will come with experience and as I've just said, um, always take small bits of wood off because you cannot replace them and know when to stop. Even if you think you could get it that 100% perfect, if there's that nagging doubt just by taking that small bit of wood off that you could possibly uh, ruin your project, just stop and uh, attach the antler sand it back off and sand it back around and and try to shall we say make your stick look a little bit better in those finishing aspects but never ruin a stick by just continually taking wood off and wood off and wood off obviously you do have to achieve some sort of finish but i've seen it too many times people chasing perfection and they do end up with something that was perfectly acceptable but chasing 100 percent perfection they have ruined a perfectly nice stick right i've mixed up a two-part um shall we say resin um this is the aftermath and obviously me cleaning up it's finished it's used up done um the stick head has been attached now um, if there's any cleaning up to be done you'd get a very short space of time leave it wait for it to dry you can always sand it back and clean it up from there do not keep messing about with it once that stuff is on let it set let it go off and then come back and then if you get any on the wood you can always sand that back slightly the only concern now that you should have is letting that go off now anything else we do to that you'll wait now till that uh, becomes fully set i shall probably let this go um, for 24 hours and then um, i'll come back and start sanding and cleaning up um, yes so basically i just filled the hole with um, epoxy filled the plug there i filled the plug filled that done around the lip and basically pushed it down on seated it checked it and then i um, stood it upright and now basically what i'm doing is uh, just letting it go like i said on some particular jobs you just have to let it go and come back and do uh, further cleanups later on start messing about with this now you will distort the antler on the shaft and indeed you could make things uh, a lot worse and make a bigger mess so let it go 24 hours come back then we'll examine it and start looking at doing a clean up yeah um the, the the epoxy's gone off i gave it two days because obviously i left this in a cold workshop over the holiday period while i was doing it um if you're in a heated um uh, environment 24 hours is, is fully good enough for you to then work the antler as you can see i've started to shape it in it's all looking rough here as i started to um blend it in i've gone through very coarse and a file um there at the moment which i'm taking off bits of antler and bits of wood i'm just trying to basically get a rough uh, sanitized area to start and then grading it all down with the various grades of sandpaper um you can put spacers in between all this uh, uh gap here uh, which basically fits onto your um like plug and and our dowel for your plug and then you fit it all down that's um extra work and on top of that that would be extra cost but uh, but um it does look nice to get that variation of wood in between the uh, joint of the antler and the shaft but um this is just a basic uh, model and um yeah i've got to grade all this in now and get it all smooth and take it back so that this the, the distinction between the wood and the antler is very minimal now 
you you can some people like to see the antler sitting uh, slightly proud of the shaft and some people like the shaft to be proud and then brought back in that's all personal choices and that's something that you will be making those decisions before you actually attach the antler because you would have assessed what materials you have at hand and you're using um it once it's on to this uh should we say point you are basically working with what you've got so if you have any desired effect you must always pre preempt that before you actually attach you can only sand out or manufacture uh, your joining aspect so much by sanding the rest of it has to be done pre-joining together but having said that i'm happy with this so i'll just sand this up and it'll be good for the customer i've still got to do my um logo and they want a specific piece of artwork on it which i'll burn on and uh, i'll uh, give this a light coating of oil let that dry and then i shall give it several coats of polyurethane yeah so this stick here is a, a nice stick it'd be uh, fantastic for walking walking the dog trips up on the moors and things like that the only thing i would say uh, regarding hiking sticks if you're doing hardcore mileage and you're scrabbling over hedges uh you know due to footpaths not being maintained and you're having to drag yourself up over should we say boulders and things like that i do find just a stick of should we say uh a basic hiking stick the the best go to and it and it's easier to get it weighted to where it's handy in the hand this is slightly top heavy but it's a thumb stick um but yeah having said that um great little stick that i think this will be and um i hope you found that of some use seeing how you attach the antler there's no real value in you watching me sand this down now because basically um that will come to personal taste and preference and how you want to grade it in um but anyway so yeah this is uh andy from folklore hiking sticks and i hope you uh, um got the measure of how to put a piece of uh, deer antler on a hiking stick